Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to today's class. So, in last class we are discussing about the generation of diversity, we are going to continue again today. So, um, uh, hope you have already went through the book and more or less you have the idea like what is going on regarding. So, uh, like uh, all other previous classes I will just spend a minute on the previous I mean slide that I ended up in the last class. Okay. So, the last class we are discussing about the number of variable region of kappa and lambda light chains and heavy chain diversity region which is not present in the light chain only present in heavy chain and the joining segment or joining part is in the light chain and heavy chain and you know the constant domain is also varying like kappa chain has 1, lambda chain has 4 to 5 and heavy chain has 9. Though there are 5 different kind of isotypes, there are some sub types also we will see most probably today's lecture or maybe the next lecture, this lecture or the next lecture. Okay. Though the constant domain is not doing any uh, uh, taking any part in the receptor diversity, but it is there for their um, the uh, effector functions of the antibody. Okay, so, this part, this part we have already discussed like the light chain, heavy chain and there how many there uh, possible of uh, if uh, V and J S A for light chain we have for example, here kappa chain we have 38 maximum and 5 um, uh, joining chain. So, if a randomly they mix up together or join together there will be possibly 190 different possibilities. So, that kind of calculation what is going to happen and what is possible thing we calculated and even if I did some mistake in calculation or something you can calculate it is a very simple calculation like for kappa chain what are the variability if I am taking the maximum number 38 then it is 38 times 5 in case of lambda chain it is 33 times 5 and in case of variable region we have to first uh, recombination is happening between d and j between d and j which is 23 times 6 and with that d j combination b is coming if I consider 46 is the maximum. So, maximum possibility is 46 into uh, 23 times 6. Okay. So, these are the possible number of heavy chain and light chain. Now, one heavy chain can join either one light uh, kappa chain or one lambda chain in, a, in any antibody the light chain should be either kappa or lambda it is not like one is lambda and one is kappa and once it is done for a particular B cell that is fixed. So, it is the B cell receptor and antibody is same that I already told you. So, upon activation the same receptor is synthesized differently and secreted as antibody. So, any B cell receptor if the receptor if the, this is the B cell and the pain is a receptor that receptor will be either kappa or lambda. Okay. So, if we combine like how many possible of total antibody is possible then we have to multiply this total number of heavy chain times kappa because any kappa chain can uh, assemble with any heavy chain similarly any lambda chain can assemble with heavy any heavy chain. So, they will combine uh, that will be the number of kappa containing antibody plus number of lambda containing antibody this is the diversity. Okay. So, today we are going to see this how this V and J are going to join how suddenly uh, the question comes automatically in mind if there is a recombination why there are two V segment are not joining why the two J are not joining why all the D's are one after another why they are not joined similarly why J segment of heavy chain are not joined. So, who regulates or control this thing 
or how it is regulated like one V will join with only one J in light chain and one D will join with only one J chain and then this D J combination will join with only one V why there is no multiple V segment in one antibody uh, hyper variable or variable region and why there is no multiple D or J. So, how it is regulated right. So, to understand that we have to see some detailed nucleotide structure of the V J uh, region sequence. Okay. Basically, we have to see or in fact, we have to see the flanking region of the V and J and D segment how it is located. So, if you see carefully I mean it is known now. So, if you see this, this is the V region. Okay. So, this is the V region and this is J region. So, I am talking about a lambda chain. Okay. If I am talking about a lambda chain, if you see this is the lambda. So, this is J and this is V. If we go say for uh, 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 say consider just one V segment and one J segment and it whatever we will discuss right now, it will be true for or any V or any J segment. Okay. So, let us see one for lambda chain. So, the V lambda immediately the flanking sequence in the 3 prime end if you see carefully there is a heptamer. Heptamer means C A C A G T G. Okay. This is a fixed sequence this is heptamer and we after that there is 23 nucleotide this 23 is the number of nucleotides 23 nucleotides which is random which is non I mean any uh, nucleotide is possible. After this heptamer and 23 there is another repeat sequence or sequence which is no number that means 9 nucleotides which is A C A A A A C C. So, this no number sequence and it is definitely it is um, complementary sequence you know what should be it is. So, this no number and heptamer sequence is very very important for this recombination and this is called recombination signal sequence R S S. Okay. So, this is spaced in case of V you see heptamer 23 nucleotide nonamer again it will continue and then another V segment then another, but this orientation like heptamer 23 and nonamer this orientation for lambda light chain is fixed. Okay. Similarly, if you see G chain G chain of the uh, lambda sequence it is again a heptamer Okay, it is again a heptamer instead of 23 here it is 12 nucleotide. Okay. So, heptamer 12 nucleotide nonamer and it is in the 3 prime flanking sequence this is also the RSS or recombination signal sequence with 20 uh, 12 base pair spacer. So, if I say 12 and 23 is the spacer between heptamer and nonamer that is going to take a big role in recombination. So, now if you see same way in variable region of kappa chain we have a heptamer, but there is a 12 base pair spacer then a nonamer it is just reverse in J it is heptamer then 23 pair uh, nucleotide spacer then a nonamer. So, it is just reverse in, um, in uh, lambda chain it is heptamer 23 nonamer and in uh, case of kappa chain the same sequence is with the J segment like heptamer 23 nonamer it is just reverse. In same way if we see the heavy chain the heavy chain variable region flanking sequence is very similar to uh, uh, lambda chain that is heptamer 23 nucleotide nonamer spacer and heptamer 23 and a nonamer. And if you see this D region which is both side is heptamer heptamer then spacer is 12 nucleotide then a nonamer. So, what this thing is I mean this is uh, I do not know how much uh, I am able to confuse you, but go slowly it is very simple and straightforward I can assure you you will understand very easily. So, if you remember your uh, previous courses like recombination, 
recombination happen with um, homologous recombination that means, if two sequence are same if they come they can come like this and pair. Okay. So, re first recombination what you need to have I mean what there should be there in recombination DNA first should be single standard and then it will come and make pair with the other or far located some sequence. So, here what happened these two repeat suppose this is double standard okay, these two repeat become single standard and then these will go and compare and make a recombination site. So, there what is normally happen the one protein binds in this sequence another protein in bind this sequence they bring them together. So, if this is a long DNA sequence if you consider this long thread of DNA just assume there is a long thread of DNA here one here one sequence is say uh, heptamer here one sequence is heptamer or here one sequence is nonamer here another sequence is nonamer. So, if there is a protein which binds to this nonamer and here is another protein binds to this nonamer and then if these two protein are very good friend and they always wants to stay together what they are going to do is they will come together. So, what will happen they will hold this nonamer sequence here they will hold this nonamer sequence here and bring them together. Okay. So, these two pair that we will see what is happening. So, then there is automatically a rule because why 23 and why 12? 23 means if you remember your uh, basic DNA structure that is 11.5 actually per turn 10.5 uh, per turn sorry. So, this 10.5 nucleotide in one turn the correct I mean if you see the old book or old version of any molecular biology or biochemistry book you may see that there are 10 base per turn, but now the calculation is slightly modified it is 10.5 bases per turn. So, either 10 or 10.5 does not matter much what is happening if there is 12 nucleotide spacer that means maximum one turn is possible. So, if DNA helix if you see that is one turn is complete in 12 nucleotide, but in 23 nucleotide if this is just almost double what is going to happen you can see if you consider 23 nucleotide there will be 2 turn of helix in DNA structure. Okay. 2 turn of helix in the DNA structure. So, this 23 and 12 is that way important because which face of the DNA is seeing by the protein or other part that is very important. Okay. So, what happened it was found that there is a rule called 1223 rule this is very important to know. Okay. So, the 1223 rule or 12 by 23 rule is a gene segment flanked by an RSS with a 12 base pair spacer typically can be joined only to one flanked by 23 base pair spacer. That means, if one heptamer and another heptamer join together then one heptamer should have a 23 nucleotide spacer another heptamer should have a 12 nucleotide spacer then only they can come and join. Okay. I am going back to your previous slide here you see this heptamer is spaced by 23 nucleotide spacer. Similarly, if you see the J of the lambda chain it has heptamer but 12. Okay. So, this heptamer can join with this heptamer because one is 23 another is 12 this is called 12 23 rule of recombination particularly played here this is discovered it is sounds very simple, but if anyone is interested how it is discovered or how they figure it out you can go and find the real research article or paper it is not that simple because it is it is so many experiments uh, to prove like this simple one line statement. So, if this is true that means no 23 23 base pair pressure containing heptamer will non join not join similarly heptamer with 12 nucleotide spacer will not join if, uh, what I mean if two segment have heptamer both side with 12 and 12 spacer which you can see in DH you see the DH part in DH part what happened there is a heptamer spacer okay, both side, but both are uh, 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 there are heptamer uh, in the both side 5 prime and 3 prime side of the DH segment and both have 12 nucleotide spacer. 
So, if this is the case if there are hundreds of d h they will never recombine because 12 12 will not recombine similarly 23 23 will not recombine. So, if you see and go detail analysis of the sequence you see you will see all the V lambda are flanked by heptamer with 23 23 both side. So, 2 23 will not recombine 2 12 will not recombine. So, only 12 and 23 will recombine and that is because this turn and other protein that turn part uh, you just draw a sequence and try to understand which side of the I mean draw a sequence with C A C A G T G and then try to uh, play with that. So, you study the recombination from previous classes from genetics or molecular biology okay, or cell biology recombination mechanism you read and then you uh, believe my word like one turn is 10 nucleotide or 10.5 nucleotide then 23 and write a sequence and then see which turn it is coming facing what. Okay. So, these 12 23 rule actually this is happening and that is why the rule made. Okay. So, no 12 will recombine, no 23 will recombine, uh, no 2 12 will recombine, no 2 23 special containing segment will recombine and that makes like if all d h has 12 12 spacer I am repeating it several way because so that you will remember that 12 12 spacer d h. So, how many d h we have? We have we have see 1 to 23 there are many d h and all d h which is not given here if you see if you zoom it and then you see what is detail the detail is that every d there is a heptamer 12 nucleotide nonamer then another 12 nucleotide or to, uh, another 23 nucleotide. So, that is how <coughs> it will go. So, every d h is flanked by heptamer with 12 nucleotide spacer and if we if the 12 23 rule is ok or right and it is right. So, no d no 2 d will recombine similarly all j in heavy chain is to, uh, flanked by 23 base pair spacer. So, no j will recombine. So, 1 is 12 another is 23. So, it is only possible that 1 d and 1 j can recombine. Okay. Now, the good thing is if you see 1 d and 1 j can recombine first okay. 1 d and 1 j recombine. So, if this recombine recombination happen what will happen? So, j and then d what is there in d 12 what is there in b what is the number of special 23. So, again these 23 and these 12 can recombine. Okay. So, these 12 23 recombine then finally, what we will see with this j will come here uh, d will come here. So, j and d will be adjacent then there will be a 12 nucleotide spacer containing heptamer and v h has 23 nucleotide spacer containing heptamer these two will recombine and make again 12 23 or satisfy the 12 23 rule. So, this is the reason why this 2 d segment or 2 j segment and 2 v segment are not joined. So, this is normally happen in bio in life uh, living system or in biological science there are every possibility to have some uh, uh, abnormalities or some uh, um, deviation of the this kind of rule, but this is normally happen that this V D J recombination follow that 12 23 rule. Okay. So, what is happening? So, now I am coming how this thing is happening. So, if you see this this is the same sequence what we have seen before it is what this is the orientation say this is uh, one segment B 1 of uh, say lambda. Okay. So, B 1 then B 2 then B 3 B 4 B 5 and then V n okay, which is around 38 right in case of lambda. So, B 1 B 2 B 3 and you see this all this heptamer nonamer are having the same color code, but not in that detail of like the previous slide. So, what is happening this heptamer the V region is immediate flanked by this heptamer then a spacer then nonamer then spacer then again another variable region then heptamer then spacer then nonamer gradually go on. Okay. And there is a j which has the signal of this um, 
uh, heptamer nonamer is reverse. Okay. So, it is reverse sequence. Now, two possibility if I consider that this V 1 and this J will join by recombination. What is happening? One state for like V 1 has this direction of the heptamer sequence and J 1 has this direction of the heptamer sequence. You see in this figure, okay, this is all forward. What is happening in this figure? You see this no number, no number two violet sequence come together, okay, and then these two arrow came here. So this region, no number, no number region will come, and that I told it is not coming by their themselves. Okay, there is one protein or a complex protein, uh, protein or protein complex which hold them. So what is happening? One is binding in this region in this no number. Okay. One protein is binding in this nonamer, another protein is binding in this nonamer, they come together. So, whole sequence come together. What is happening as a result? All the internal sequence between or in sequence in between this V and J, they become a very big loop, clear? Very big loop where V2, 2V, and that means if there are 38, one is joining, that means 39 V segment are in this loop with all this sequence then what happen? Then there will be a recombination and recombination you know that there is a uh, DNA cut then join right that I will come later. So, what is happening? They, they come together then there is a endonuclease which will cut that DNA then there will be a joining or some synthesis or repair ligase all these thing will come. So, what is happening? These two sequence will come together and this sequence will make a very big loop okay. and this V and J will join. So, so what is happening actually? So, big length of DNA assume that there is a big thread. So, you make a bring here then make a tie a given knot here. So, DNA two sequence here bring them together you make a knot. So, there will be a very big loop then if you cut it here what will happen? This two piece will come I mean one was here another was here. So, this will come and the loop part will go out okay. the same or similar thing is happening. So, here so the big loop is going and V j join one thing we have to remember most mostly or most of the cases are almost all the B cells and it is happening in T cells also. Once recombination is done like one V j joined in light chain and heavy chain V d j joining is complete. So, the recombination machinery which is a uh, one of the one or uh, several very important proteins which involves in this process or the recombination process which bring them together cut it and join it and do that um, do this job is not expressing. So, recombination machinery in B cell and T cell disappear when heavy chain light chain recombination is happening in B cell and in case of T lymphocyte uh, alpha and beta uh, chain uh, rearrangement is happening. These machinery or recombination are not expressing anymore and at the same um, as, as a result what is happening no further recombination is happening. So, once recombination is successfully done and it makes a receptor either B cell receptor or a T cell receptor no more recombination is happening. It is normally this is the case. So, one B cell is one done. So, one say suppose in this case what happened this is very simple and straightforward. What is like V 1 is joining with J. So, rest of the V is deleting out anyway. So, there is no scope of further recombination right, but this is not the always case the, it is possible that V 3 can join with V j. So, V 3 to V n will be uh, V 4 to V n will be eliminated, but V 1 V 2 will still exist in the cell or the in the chromosome, but even after that it is not going to uh, recombine anymore. Even if I say the last one the V n is recombined with um, j. Okay. So, what will happen the in between some very little portion of chromosome will be deleted A rest V 1 to V n minus 1 in this case it is uh, say in case of lambda it is uh, 37. So, V 1 to V n minus 1 is still to going to be in the chromosome, but even after that 
no recombination is going to happen. So, once recombination is successfully done, why I am telling successful that any recombination can lead some non frame or miss frame or deletion addition kind of um, mutation. So, the protein may not be perfect or some frame shift can happen, then we say that it is non a fruitful recombination. So, fruitful recombination if it is there, no further recombination is going to happen. Okay. But this is one way that it can happen, it make a big loop, they eliminate. So, they will be completely out from the chromosome forever, but in this case, okay, this is not very, uh, it looks little difficult, but it is not that difficult. It is particularly purposefully shown here in this way. If you see this line, what you see is V 1, V 2, all arrows are in this direction. right? In case of V n, arrows in this direction. What does it mean? It means that this V n segment is in the other strand of the DNA. Okay. It is other strand of the DNA, because in chromosome protein or gene may be in one direction and sometimes you see the arrow is in different direction. It is not that gene will start from 3 prime to 5 prime, because the convention of DNA is what the way we read or we study the gene and everything we always say 5 prime to 3 prime. So, suddenly one gene, one gene is direction this way, suppose this is the chromosome, another gene is direction this way, another is direction this way, but another gene may be this direction. What does this mean? So, that means if this is the double stranded DNA, if this is 5 prime and this is 3 prime, 5 prime, 3 prime, then this means this gene is this direction and this strand and other gene is this direction means the gene will this gene sequence or the sense sequence is this. Okay. It is not that it is reverse, it is same way other direction. So, all genes are 5 prime to 3 prime. Okay. So, this 5 prime to 3 prime in this case, if this 5 prime to 3 prime, this particular one, if and this j 1 is also in this direction. So, if they want to come in this way like two opposite facing like this direction. So, we have to make this structure. So, this structure like two heptamer is like this direction going outwards our arrow head is outwards, then the loop cannot be like straight forward loop. It will be a loop kind of difficult to think like how it is managed, but ultimately what will happen they will form this structure they will join but in this case what will happen? In this case what will happen? It will not eliminate from the chromosome. Okay. It will not be eliminate from the chromosome and this whole structure like whole structure means whole sequence of whatever. Suppose this is V n that means V 1 to V n minus 1, V 1 to V n minus 1 in if it is a lambda that means, 37 V segment will be present in chromosome, but not like previous way, okay. not like previous way. So, here also same thing is happening ultimately what we see, we see L n V n and J, here also L n L 1 V 1 J. So, it can happen with any one. So, if the orientation of the gene or the if the uh, V 1 segment is here. So, if suddenly one gene is I mean say for example, I am drawing this again. So, if this is the double standard DNA 5 prime 3 prime 5 prime 3 prime. So, one gene this this then it may be this I do not know exactly how this uh, uh, I mean all this orientation I do not remember like all V how it is located it may be like this right. So, some V may be this direction, some V may be this direction. So, whatever the direction, so the if it is in the same direction like uh, opposite direction is J like this form like this direction is V and J is this then it will go this this way and if it is other strand it will go this way clear. So, this is the two thing and here one thing I do not know whether I mention it what is this L 1. It, I never mentioned L 1, okay. L 1, L 2, L n. Okay. So, what this means? L is the leader sequence. L is the leader sequence. I hope you know what is the leader sequence. 
or signal peptide because any protein any protein goes to I mean all the proteins are synthesized in uh, cytoplasm then some protein goes to back to nucleus some protein goes to Golgi some protein to mitochondria some are in the membrane. So, all the receptor proteins are going uh, uh, surface uh, receptor proteins are going to the plasma membrane. So, these targeting like when protein synthesized in cytoplasm how they I mean how the cell will know where to go because that signal peptide or leader peptide actually the information is written there. There are some machinery how it will go, but that machinery can understand say they will see the pool it is just kind of barcoding. Okay. You know that uh, in, in if you go to airport you will see that all uh, all the baggage different I mean say suppose in airport you go to uh, air India um, counter you see in the queue some people are going say from uh, Calcutta. Okay. From Calcutta some people are going to Delhi, some people are going to Bombay, Mumbai, some people are going to Guwahati, uh, Bengaluru. Okay. So, all are in the queue and their baggage is going one after another, but they will all collect it in one place and then someone is there to sort them out. Okay. This bag is for Bangalore, this bag is for uh, Mumbai, this bag is for New Delhi. Okay. So, how they figure it out? Because there is a tag, that tag is the leader peptide. Even after that all proteins are synthesized in the cytoplasm, so there is a tag that is the signal peptide that signal peptide is recognized and depending on that whether it is a mitochondrial signal or it is a nuclear signal or it is a membrane signal or secretory signal everything is written in this leader sequence and that leader sequence direct the protein to its place or the proper location. Similarly, all this receptor whatever the B cell receptor that is supposed to go to where that is supposed to go to if this is the cell. So, all protein synthesized here, here they will go to membrane and they, they will display like this. So, how they will go to membrane? This leader peptide. So, this L is leader and which is a part of B segment, okay, which is not there and this is ultimately we will see what is happening because in antibody also this leader peptide is there. Okay. But the leader peptide is located in the end terminal domain of the protein most of the time. Okay. Leader or signal sequence most of the time it is present in the end terminal. It is not 100 percent cases it is valid or true because there are some internal signal also particularly the nuclear localization signal many times it is present in between the protein or end of the protein C terminal. Okay. So, these leader peptide are the sequence which is present. So, e leader peptide is present for everyone it is not that it is one. So, every V segment is uh, 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 every V segment have this uh, has this uh, leader peptide before their sequence start. Okay. This will be processed in eventually. So, this is the uh, for this lecture this is here we will finish and we will see exactly more detail in next lecture what is happening and how this come together. Okay. So, see you for in the next lecture. Bye for today.